Welcome to the section on solving real-world Active Directory problems with PowerShell. By now you should have a very good understanding of how to navigate the PowerShell environment. Now we'll look at solving some real-world problems using that knowledge. We'll look at discovering invalid Active Directory property entries. Then we'll look at correcting those invalid AD property entries. We'll create a living company directory. Then we'll do a mass Active Directory user creation. And then finally, we'll use AD properties to fill in some empty properties. Welcome to the video on discovering invalid Active Directory property entries. In this video, we're going to determine the properties we want to check. We'll discover the inaccuracies and then we'll create a quick report to show those inaccuracies. We'll log into our domain controller and we have PowerShell Integrated Scripting Environment on the screen, or ISE. So what we need to do is we need to find out if there's some inaccuracies. Now sometimes it is going to matter if you're using other third-party tools with Active Directory if a property such as, in our case, we're going to look at city, if they don't all match correctly, you're going to get some odd-looking reports, and we don't want to hand odd-looking reports to management. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to decide what property we need to be dealing with. So down in our console, we're going to use the get ad user, and we're just going to use it for John Doe dash PR for properties. You could tab complete it. You can also just shorthand leave it there. We don't want to shorthand in a script, but if you're in the console, it's perfectly fine to do it. That's why they put that in there as allowable. Now what this is going to do is get every single property that we have. And so at this point we can look in here and we can say, okay, for our report that we're going to be using, we're going to be using this city. In fact, we'll just go ahead and copy that. And we can see here that it's New York for John Doe. And we have N and Y are capitalized and there's a space here. So let's see if that's uniform across our entire company. And the way we can do that is go back down here, get AD user dash filter star, that's going to get them all, dash property. We're going to add city. And then we're going to pipe it, and all we want is the name and the city. And now we can see that they all do match. Now, I happen to have a script that is going to mess this up. So I'm going to run that, and you can see that now they're messed up. So we have New York properly, and then we have some where it's just been squished together. And this is very common if you have multiple technicians that are adding new users. Some may type it one way, some may type it another. But we don't want the New York without a space. We want that space in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to our script, and we're going to start building out a tool that will get us a report so we can know who all needs to be fixed. So we're going to do that same basic command. Now, since this is part of our script, we're going to go ahead and tab complete so that we have full parameter names. We're going to get all the users. We're going to get the property for city. We're going to pipe that. Now, we could do a question mark for where, but best practices, we're going to put the full commandlet. So we're going to do where object city dash not equal to dollar sign null. Okay, so if there's no city, if it's one of the built-in accounts, we don't care. We don't want to deal with those. Those don't matter for our report. But where there's something in there, we want to keep working with it. So we're going to select city. Now you'll see that we're starting to get close to the end of the page. So remember, our trick for that is anytime there is a pipe, PowerShell will automatically continue to the next line looking for that more information. Because if you're putting a pipe, then that means you want to go somewhere with that information. So by putting that pipe, we now can keep it all in a very nice, concise, readable format. So we're going to select, because we don't want all the information, we just need city and SAM account name. And we're going to sort, and then we're going to sort it by city. The reason we're going to sort by city instead of name is we're looking for the inaccuracies, not necessarily the users. We want to bunch all the ones together that are inaccurate. If we just did the names, we'd have to go through each individual one. But if we go through all of them that are 
inaccurate and we bundle them together, it's going to be much easier to see the ones that we need to resolve. And when we go to resolve them later, it's going to be a little bit easier to do that. So we're going to sort by city. Now we're going to go ahead and run this by hitting F5 or you can press the run script button. And we will see that now we have only the users that have a city field and we'll see what that city is and we've got them all sorted together with the ones that are needing to be corrected and the ones that are already correct. So what do we do now? Because we want to hand this off to another technician, we're going to add one more pipe and we're going to export this to a CSV file. And we'll dollar sign report file. Now, why am I putting a variable here? Because we want to make a tool that is usable again and again. Now, in this case, probably not going to use this again, but if we have a large team that are putting in new users, there's a chance we might need to use this again. So it's always best if there's a chance you're going to use it again or components of this and possibly another script, go ahead and make it repeatable. So we'll come up here and we'll put dollar sign report and we can tab complete that because we've now created it down lower. And for this example, we're just going to do a simple read host and make this an interactive tool. Now, ideally, you'd put a parameter block here and we'll go back later and we'll make a parameter block. Included with a course, we'll have two script files. One will be for an interactive and one will be for one that just has a parameter block and you can pass that report file into a path parameter. And for this, we'll put enter report path and name. And I like to put an example just in case to help make sense to somebody down the road. So this is just a very simple, very quick script and we can go ahead and run this it's going to ask for the so we'll put and that should get us our report so now that same bit of information that we have right here we can also run it independent of the entire script so if you're just testing a section what we can do is we can hit the run selection now we're getting an error and we're getting an error because there's a pipe right here so you want to be careful to only select that which you want to run. If you have a pipe at the very end of it, it's going, hey, you want to go somewhere with this, and I don't know where you want to go. So we'll try running it now, and you'll see we get our output. So if you just want to test, say, one line, you can run that. But remember, you can't just select the whole line because there's a pipe there at the end. You're going to want to select just the part that you want to run. And when you run that, you're going to get that output and that output only.